This past Monday, as a country, we celebrate the birthday of Dr. King. And every year during the King holiday, we hear his I Had a Dream speech played over and over. It feels like a million times. And that's as it should be, because that speech was probably the pinnacle of Dr. King's advocacy as a freedom fighter. However, at times I am concerned that we, all of us, believe that this speech was the full measure of who Dr. King was. I am concerned that over, over time, history and historians have sought to soften Dr. King, to make him acceptable, not controversial, and maybe comfortable. Dr. King was not a kindly uncle who only gave comfort and messages. He was, in fact, a very passionate fighter for righteousness. If you really want to understand the full measure of Dr. King, don't just listen to his I Have a Dream speech, but read one of his most important writings, a letter from a Birmingham jail. In his letter, Dr. King spoke, of the, spoke about the fierce urgency of now. Sometimes, sometimes, we are called to protest, to speak out when we see that another human being's rights are being infringed upon. We feel that we might have a moral obligation to speak. The question sometimes is not if we speak. The question is how we speak. We also talk at length about the very important fact that Dr. King not only preached but practiced nonviolence. We see in videos and old black and white footage, we see him being hit, we see dogs set up on him, we even see him being spit on, yet he never struck back. He wanted to be remembered, as he said, as a drum major for peace. But I think sometimes people not, may not be clear that nonviolence was not Dr. King's goal. Nonviolence and peace was the vehicle Dr. King used to reach his destination. The destination he was trying to reach was justice. The destination wasn't nonviolence. If today you feel that as an American you find the need to peacefully protest anything that, may deem, that you may deem inherently immoral or unfair, it is not uh, unpatriotic to do so. That is not what Dr. King would have said. In fact, just the opposite. Dr. King would have never encouraged us to take a wait and see approach while our fellow, while our fellow citizens are already being targeted. That would be against the fierce urgency of now. However, if you feel you cannot disobey civilly, if you cannot be hit, if you cannot be spit on, if you cannot have dogs set up on you, or if you cannot even handle being called a name without wanting to strike back or worse, then you are also not following the teachers of Dr. King. He would have not accepted your meeting violence with violence or hate with hate. Don't go out there if you can't do it civilly. Standing up for right is not comfortable. You have to be willing to be hated. There were people who deeply hated Dr. King, who threatened not only to kill him, but to kill his wife and four young children. If you are going to stand on a moral high ground, you have to accept hate. You have to swallow the pain, and you have to get up the next day to continue to fight whatever you believe in is correct without ever hitting back. And one more thing, I want to say congratulations to Paulo, Paulo Trindell, who is the newest Loudoun County resident. He took his oath of office today. Thank you.